Norwegian meatball left the wrap. Dehydrated Idaho russets, rehydrate with water. Extra virgin olive oil. Okay. Kosher salt. We need our mashed potatoes and our flour. Now we're gonna ball it up. We're gonna roll okay. them out. So for every lefse you make, you have to go through this whole process. Correct. <laughs> so if you tried to pick this up, it would just break it off. It would tear. And you have your Harry Potter sword, and Correct. you're gonna be able to pick that up. <laughs> this place is magical. This is the lefse wand. And then you come over to the griddle and you roll it out. It's gonna cook usually about 35 seconds each But side. once it gets cooked. It will hold together enough that you can use it as a wrap. Okay, our next game plan is we're gonna make our yay toast gravy. Yay so, toast. Yay toast. This is a roux, so I Got kind it. of brown the butter and I brown the flour a little bit. Milk, white wine. Great. Madeira wine, kosher salt, our yay toast cheese, nutmeg. Next, meatballs. So are there fried breadcrumbs, milk and cream, eggs. The toasted flour that we end up with right. from making lefsa, we save it and use it. Well done. Caramelized onions, salt, black pepper, allspice, ground, ground beef and ground pork. Chill this for three hours. And then we're gonna bake them off? For eight minutes. About four, 475. We've toasted our lefsa, green cabbage, and then this is the sour call, which is a sweet and sour purple cabbage with caraway seed. Caraway with it. This is the Yetos gravy that you saw. Yes. Meatballs. Roll it up, kind of like a burrito. Cut it in half. <laughs> How have I existed this long <laughs> without having this? Delicious, tender, nice meatball. Yetos sauce mm -hmm. lights out. Wow, that's good. Yeah. So I'm here in the southwest area of Portland, Oregon to check out a place where the chef came from a long background in the corporate world. And finally, one day, he said he's going to break free. That's right, he's going to do things on his own terms, do things his own way. He's going to cook from his favorite seasons and his favorite regions. Wait a second, that'd be a perfect name for a restaurant. This is Seasons and Regions Seafood Grill. Salmon salad on the fly. The seafood is so fresh and it's always delicious. We've got monkfish linguine. There's a lot of good mom and pops in Portland, and this is definitely one of them. It's just out of this world. And out of the box, which is how chef and owner Greg Schwab rolls. We take the best of the season and we use world cuisine recipes. So, what that means is that we can do whatever we want. If you want to make it, you can do it, you can do it exactly. how you want to do it. It kind of switches it up depending on what's available, which is pretty great, but I haven't had a better Chipino in Portland yet. Chipino with crab cake, pick up, please. The fish in the Chipino is always super fresh. The sauce is outrageous. It's got great spice, it's got great depth of flavor. So, what are we going to make? Northwest Seafood Chipino. Okay. Okay. We're gonna make our chipino broth first. Olive oil, carrots, onions, celery, puree garlic, thyme, pepper flakes, black pepper, ground fennel, marjoram, oregano, bay leaf, kosher salt. Next up, sugar, red wine vinegar. Red wine, lemon juice, basil puree, anchovy paste for a little more fish flavor there. Clam, Clam stock. stock, tomato paste, diced tomato, crushed tomato, water. How long is this all going to cook down for? Two hours. I assume that you're able to just mix in the seafood that you like when you have it, when it's fresh. Yes. What are we running today? We're going to top it with a Dungeness crab cake. A crab cake goes on, on top? top? Yes. That I haven't seen. Pre-cooked onions, egg, roasted red pepper, parsley, Tabasco for heat, Worcestershire sauce, Old Bay seasoning, Dijon, and now... Local Dungeness? Yep. Just a little binder of the breadcrumb. Yeah. Make that into one big crab cake for me, and that'll be fine. There you go. So we're going to give our ring of just a little spray, some panko, the crab, and then panko on top. We're going to pan fry this. Actually, we're going to deep fry it. Time to build it. A little clarified butter, salmon, little rockfish, salt spring mussels, white wine, lemon juice, some of the chipino base that we built. Fantastic. Mussels are open. A little more salt, pepper, a little parsley. Smells fantastic. Crab cake, chive on top. And that's all she wrote. That's really good. That broth is fantastic. Typically, when you have chipino, you know, you like to have some bread or something to dip it into. And this crab cake on top is perfectly crunchy, which would be kind of like the crusty bread going into it. Works incredibly well. Thank you, Chef, for wrecking it, because this is what I'm going to expect now is a little salty, crunchy crab right on top. Something I didn't see coming, but I definitely would eat all day for the Excellent. rest of the week, Excellent. starting now. <laughs>
We've got cioppino. Oh, the cioppino is good. The crab cake is delicious. It's always so flavorful. Can't be beat. So I'm here in Eugene, Oregon, home of the Ducks, University of Oregon. Now, what else can you expect when you come to Eugene an hour and a half off the coast of Oregon? Exactly, great fresh seafood. That's because they got this joint, Fisherman's Market. Every time I come in here, they'll be bringing fresh fish in, you know, whether it's gonna be salmon or albacore or halibut. They live right there, they cook them right there, and they serve it right here, and I eat it. Ryan, he just is an expert on fish. That's because Ryan Rogers is the real deal. Hardcore fishing in Alaska for decades while running this joint since 97. All the fish that's here is coming from? Mostly all from Oregon. You have all your buddies and all the hookups and? Yeah. <laughs> it's like it was swimming yesterday. Some of it still is. See the crab in the crab tank and then they cook it up for you fresh. It's just amazing. Crab dinner with fries and slaw. They cook the crab in a crab pot right out the front door. Can't get any fresher. All right. Whoa! A little warm for you? But that is hot crab. That's outrageous. Without question, the most seafood flavored crab right. really, I think, has to be the dungeon. It's some lemon juice. I'll take a little dip in some butter. That's slaw. Nice crunch, really refreshes the palate. That's the freshest experience you can get. It's juicy, it's succulent. You don't even need the butter, it's so wonderful. Dungeness crab dinner. Dungeness crab is especially sweet. And it's got such a really good flavor. You can't get it fresher. I like the Fisherman's Market because there's just nothing else like it. It's extremely unique. Kind of a crazy place you got Tanks making noise, and coolers, and people buying fish, dudes cooking right there. It's different food that you can get from anywhere else. You can get fish and chips with any kind of fish? Any kind of fish. Seriously? Yeah. Can't get bored. You can always try something new. The Cajun crawfish pie. Time for pie. What is that you're putting on top? Sour cream. And what do you have over here on the salad? We got smoked salmon, house salad. Dude, that's outrageous. You smoke this in-house? Of course. You're so gangster. Let's look at this. Mm. Great crust, not soupy, not too thick, tender. There is tender and succulent, and the texture of it is awesome. I didn't know about the sour cream thing you're doing, but it's excellent. This is crazy, man. Mm. It's perfect just enough spice to have a little kick. This is to die for. It's so flaky. It just can't get any fresher unless you caught it yourself. If I'm hungry, I just say, we're going here. This is a full seafood culinary experience. From the live tanks to the fresh seafood market, doing the food, dishes like that. How much do you think we can fit in the back of that car? You know, I'm only about eight hours away from my town. Ice it up. <laughs> so I'm here on the 99E Highway, about 17 miles from Eugene, Oregon, 97 miles from Portland in this little farming community. Now this is an unincorporated town called Lancaster. And the lady that owns the town, well, her son happens to own the only restaurant in town. Now you think that's interesting? Wait till you see the menu. This is Junkyard Extreme Burger and Brats. Okay, I've got a Wisconsin and a Chicago. I'm a big eater, and I like big hamburgers and big hot dogs, and this is definitely it. You can expect to get messy. We never suffer from the lack of food when we come here. And that's how owners Craig and Kim Zumwalt like it, big and bold. After working in Nashville's music biz, Craig headed back home and opened this place in 06. How many people live here in Lancaster? Mm, probably about 30. Wow. Is this a trailer? It's a race trailer. And then you built the shed on next to it? Yes. Awesome. Okay, I've got a party in your mouth and a fried cheese pizza. Today I'm having the fried cheese pizza. The best part is the cheese, and that's what the crust is. And what are we gonna make? We're gonna make crustless pizza. It's a fried cheese pizza. The Temple of Health. You guys should have a gym right next to this place. All right, let's hit it. Take our pineapple right over here to the grill. 
Boom. We're gonna take our Parmesan, about like so. Cheddar, onion, a little gorgonzola. All the members of the cheese family are showing up for this. Pepperoni. Throw a little mozzarella on there. More cheese. More cheese. Now we're gonna run that homemade pizza sauce right across here. And a little olive. Now we're gonna throw on our grilled pineapple. Then our in-house pesto. Take our dome. Voila. It cooks for maybe two and a half, three minutes. So we're gonna top with some sliced tomatoes. We're gonna cut it. Wow, that holds up a lot better than I thought it was going to. Mm -hmm. This right here is just a gigantic thing of that crunchy fried cheese that you love on the outside of a quesadilla. The fact that you put toppings on it, God, it's crazy. Look at that. Fried cheese? Can't beat it. Hey, here, Carrie. Here's your fried cheese pizza. It's extremely addicting. You have to share it. Everybody wants to try it. I've never seen a fried cheese pizza anywhere else. Junkyard is unique foods that you just can't find anywhere else. This is a hidden gem. I'm telling you, dude, we've seen some crazy stuff on Triple D. Yeah. This is up there. Crazy Craig in the car carrier. Loving it. Very nice, brother. Just across the Morrison Bridge from downtown Portland and across the street from the Oregon Ballet Theater, now I give you these specific driving instructions because I drove by the joint twice, is this place, Bunk Sandwiches, where two dudes are scratch making the not so ordinary sandwiches. Made by a couple of real food fanatics. All right, I've got a cured meat. Tommy Habit. How the Rubens doing? And Nick Wood. Coming your way. Who met at a fine dining joint. I hired Nick, he was my sous chef. And we always just really enjoyed making sandwiches, so we decided to open a sandwich shop. Holly. We just make whatever we want. There's always something different. Like Bunk's own house cured pork belly. You can put pork belly on anything and you're gonna be all right. From a po' boy. Oh my God, so good. To a Vietnamese bami. Very fresh. Even their Ruben. I'm dying to try the pork belly Ruben. All right. Fantastic. This is the best Reuben in town. Not something you see on every sandwich menu, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. down with it. So we got a pork belly. The cure is just going to be these uh, the dry ingredients. We'll start off with a little bit of this chili flake, some black pepper, fennel seed, and we're just going to buzz that. I think this is one of the biggest mistakes people use is not using really fresh spices. Yeah. Put a little uh, brown sugar in there. So yeah, this is like 50-50 salt and sugar is what I do. You meant fitty-fitty. Fitty-fitty, yeah, for sure. Put a little bit on the bottom first. You're just going to pack that bad boy yeah, right down into it. A little bit on top of there. Rub it down real good. Put a little garlic, and we'll put some of this thyme on there. So we're just going to grate a little nutmeg. A little bit of nutmeg, a little more patty-patty. Yeah, just rub it in. It's good to sit for a couple days. And then we're going to roast it off, slow yeah, cook it. It cooks for like four hours. Now we're getting into Russian dressing. Pretty simple. It's just mayonnaise, ketchup, whole grain mustard. I'm going to put a little egg in there, chopped pickles. That's a great looking dressing. Just a little salt and black pepper. Red wine vinegar, a little bit of Worcestershire. The last thing I do for my Russian dressing is I just stir in a little bit of bacon fat. Uh -huh. Because a little bit. Just a little bit. Mm, maybe I should try this, this deliciousness. This, this. Mm, wow. Oh, dude. I don't even know that it's fair to call that Russian dressing. You, I mean, you got to call that liquid Moscow or something. <laughs> so we have our uh, cured pork belly. Now cool it down, slice it, make a sandwich. Totally. Wow. Sorry, I'll put it back. <laughs> I'll wait for the sandwich. We take some dark rye, Russian dressing on there. A little Swiss. Swiss, yeah. Right. And then our pork belly. A little fresh cracked pep pepper, our sauerkraut. Brush this down with some butter. Talk about the mini panini. Toss this on there. And you put the slamma on the clamma? That cooks for just a few minutes. We just crisp it up a little bit, and then we put it in the oven to finish it. That's it. Look at that bad yeah. boy. Mm. Oh. You get the subtleties of the pork mm -hmm. mixed with the really nice rub you put on it. Mm -hmm. Slow cook it, render down the fat. Mm. You guys are great, man. When I come back to Portland, yeah. I'm coming to bunk. All right, right on, cool. Load the trunk when you go to the bunk. Right. <laughs> we got a table here. God, I'm gonna make yeah. all my bunk words and send them to you. <laughs>